guys! So today we are talking about something that I think is very very exciting and that is planning a trip to Disneyland. Now me and Scott have only been to Disneyland once in our whole lives. We went for our first time together last December of 2015 and we're going again this December of 2016 and I could not be more excited. I've pretty much planned two trips to Disneyland now and I just love it. I think it's so much fun. I love planning, I love figuring out what we're going to do on what day, where we're going to eat, where we're going to stay, and all those kinds of things. And so I thought it would be really fun to make a video about it, and maybe some of you are planning a trip to Disneyland, or maybe you've never been and you have no idea where to start. I'm just hoping that maybe this video will help some of you guys, and maybe you can just take some tips and tricks that I have used in planning our trips. I've written some things down so that I can tell you guys kind of the order in which I have done things. And I think the first thing before anything else that you always have to do is decide when you're going to go to Disneyland. Um, I think when deciding when you want to go, there are a few things you need to take into consideration. And that's the time of the year, um, maybe the weather that you'd prefer to see, and then the crowd level also that you'd prefer to see. Um, I think you need to figure out what your number one priority is when going to Disneyland, and if it's like... I want to see Disneyland when there there's the lowest crowd level possible. Then what I did that really helped me was going online and looking for crowd calendars online. Um, I had never been to Disneyland obviously last year when I was planning our very first trip so it was very helpful for me to go online and get other people's opinions and advice on when Disneyland was the most crowded versus the least crowded. Now something else um, that we of course took into consideration when planning our trip was that Scott and I love Christmas so much that we decided right off the bat we want to see Disneyland at Christmas time. That was our number one priority. So obviously that immediately right away it limited us to going during November or December so that we could see Disneyland decorated for Christmas. That was our number one priority. So, moving on to the next thing in planning your trip, like I said, we decided right off the bat we wanted to go to Disneyland during Christmas time because we just love Christmas and that's when we wanted to see it. Um, I think the second thing you need to do is decide for how long you want to go. So when deciding for how long you want to visit Disneyland, I think a good thing to think about is how many days you'd like to spend at each park. So I think a good rule of thumb is, or like maybe my recommendation just from going there the one time, is two days at each park. And that's coming from like a big Disney fan. I want to, that's not necessarily taking my time, but I want a good two days to like see everything really well, do everything I want to do, and then even have a little bit of extra time. I think you could probably see everything you wanted to see in one day at each park, but again, like spending two days at each park helps you to really see everything really well. Um, so just to give you an idea, last year when we went for our first time, I think we only did four nights at Disneyland. When we were there for about four days, we spent about three days at Disneyland and then about one day at California Adventure. So this year we are going back for six nights, so about seven full days we are going to have there. And I have it split up to be about three or four days at Disneyland and then like two or three days at California Adventure. Now finally, when figuring out how long you can go, I'm talking all about days at theme parks. But something that we really missed out on the first time around was it was our first time at Disney. Again, we were so, so excited. We were like, go, go, go. And when we got home, we were exhausted. I don't think I've ever been so tired in my whole life as I was when I got back from Disneyland. Of course, it was all worth it, but when we decided we could go back this year, it was a kind of a priority of ours to have one or two days where we could just relax. And it didn't have to be like, okay, we have a fast pass for Big Thunder in 10 minutes and we gotta get to it, and then we have to go to this, and then we have our lunch reservation at this time. Um, this year we want it to be a little less of that and a little more of just enjoying spending time with each other and being at Disneyland and just enjoying being there and not doing so much rushing around. So um, with all of that being said, those are just some good things to take into consideration 
when deciding for how long you can go. Like I said, just to sum it up, I think two days at each park is a good rule of thumb, but it is 100% up to you. Of course, you decide if you need or want less or more time at each park. And like I said, if you need or want um, a little bit of time to relax thrown in there with not so much just like running around at the theme parks. So now we have covered the first thing being deciding when you want to go to Disneyland, the second thing being deciding for how long you can go to Disneyland, and then I think after you've decided both of those things, you can go ahead and start looking at plane tickets and hotels and of course park tickets. Part of this step is going to be a little bit different for me because Scott and I are cast members, as you guys probably already know, and so when planning our trips to Disneyland, we don't have to think about park tickets because we do get into the parks for free. But I think if you are someone that does have to buy park tickets, I think this is another good way or another good thing that could help you decide for how long you can go. Um, look at the different packages they have. If they have good three or five day packages for your family, then that could be something that helps you decide um, when you're going and even for how long you can go. So that's something to take into consideration. Next thing, like I said, I wanted to talk about um, looking at plane tickets. Now this is just very self-explanatory. We just did a lot of both times when we decided we were going to Disneyland, we just did a lot of searching. How much are tickets going to cost us? What is the average price we should be looking at? And then just checking back every now and then and trying to get the best price. Now, the only tip I can give you in this area is that our first trip, we decided kind of last minute that we were going to Disneyland. And so I think we booked our plane tickets about two months in advance and we spent a lot of money. I think it was almost $500 a person on these plane tickets. Um, our second time around we decided pretty far in advance, about seven months in advance I think we decided, and then we only spent about $350 a person on plane tickets from Orlando, Florida into LAX. Um, but again, I'm going to say, Disneyland's website is so, so helpful because they even have information on the different um, airports that you can fly into when you're wanting to go to Disneyland. So definitely check out their website because they have amazing information on all of the different aspects of planning your trip. I think getting your plane tickets and deciding what hotel you want to stay at are kind of run parallel to each other when you're planning your trip. So once you have your plane tickets, you've decided you're going, you've figured out what time, all those awesome things, I think the very next thing is figuring out what hotel you're going to stay at. Now, Disneyland has three on-site hotels, and they are the Disneyland Resort, the Paradise Pier Resort, and Grand Californian Resort and Spa. And so, um, after doing a lot of research online, um, specifically, I think, when deciding last year what hotel we wanted to stay at, for us, something that was our top priority was proximity. And I know that sounds silly because Disneyland is so much smaller and more compact than Walt Disney World, but we kind of decided we wanted to stay at the whichever hotel was the closest to everything. So that was a pretty easy decision last year. We wanted the closest hotel and figured out that we could afford Grand Californian, so that's where we stayed. So pretty much to sum up what we've talked about, about buying plane tickets and hotels and park tickets, I think the Disneyland website will help you immensely in deciding these things. If you are someone that has to buy tickets to Disney, go and look at that first because that's going to help you decide like what package is best for you and your family. Um, and then after you've decided on tickets and how long and everything like that, the Disneyland website has great information on... Um, the airports that you can fly into and um, hotels you can stay at. So I have talked about mostly the Disneyland on-site hotels because that's what we really have decided we want to do. But Disneyland has a lot of what they call good neighbor hotels and their website even has information about their good neighbor hotels which I just think is amazing because um, if you really just want a cheaper option you don't care where you stay, you don't really care how close it is because even the good neighbor hotels even are really not that far. So um, 
there are just endless options if you don't want to stay at a Disney hotel, if you don't care about staying on property, there are a lot of off-property options that are not that far away from property. And all those things being said, pretty much just to sum up, I think when planning out buying your plane tickets and hotels and park tickets, I think the earlier the better has been my experience in buying um, both the plane tickets and buy, um, booking your hotel. I just think the earlier the better, so if you can decide about six months in advance, I think is going to be the best. But... Um, Again, when we planned our very first trip to Disneyland, it was only about two months in advance and everything turned out smoothly. I think we just ended up paying a little bit more for the plane tickets because it was um, as last minute as it was. So there are a lot more things I would love to talk about when um, talking about planning to a trip to Disneyland, but I'm pretty sure I have rambled on enough for this video. So I'd love to make another video um, talking about everything else that I want to talk about when it comes to planning a trip to Disneyland. So I think I'm just going to end this video here, like I said, make a second one and go into um, other things about planning your trip to Disneyland in a separate video. I hope what I have talked about so far has been a help for you guys or at least has been fun to hear about. I love, like I said, I have had so much fun planning the two trips that we have done so far to Disneyland. I hope you guys have taken something away from this video um, or at the very least that you just enjoyed it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!